Yes, the gate code is pound. Give these guys the gate code every time. It's in the system. Let's open up some sh <laughs> All right, this is gonna be tough. To set up an unboxing was annoying. Now I know why unbox therapy is unmatched because this is annoying to set up. The lighting, I gotta turn off my fans, it's hot outside, the AC's off. You guys don't care. We're here to unbox some stuff. Thought I'd start off with what came in the mail recently. Thought you guys would wanna see this. That's the quad lock motorcycle mount. So we'll unbox that later. Got some stuff that I don't really know what it is. Some underwear. Me undies. Ooh, it is in hers. Cute. Stoked, stoked. Those are Kevlar lined underwear by MeUndies. No, they're not. This was sent to me complimentary by Churchill Gloves. Appreciate it, guys. This is a beanie. It's got a nice little note that says, thanks for the support, stay healthy. I'll be wearing this once it gets a little cold. Right now it's like 80 degrees. Check out the glove video I did on Churchill Gloves here. Speaking of gloves, I got these recently. My misfortune is your fortune. I'm gonna be giving these away in an upcoming video. Uh, these are the Akin Ghost Gloves. They're supposed to be snug tight. They're not that tight on me, so I got another pair in route, and I don't wanna pay to ship them back to Australia, so be on the lookout for that video because this will be a giveaway, a medium. If you're in the States, I'll ship them to you for free. Oh, we're doing an oil change. Needed some filters. Leather CV, a boot shifter cover. Pretty excited to put this on the boot, test it out. Ooh, this goes around your belt. Appreciate it, I'm putting this on the boot. You guys didn't come here to see oil filters, my underwear, quad lock, motorcycle mount. I left off the bills and the sushi flyers. You're welcome. Let's get into why you actually click this link. Let's open up and unbox a helmet. Here it is. This is the new, brand new, brought to you by, just kidding, this is an old Bell helmet. I don't even ride with this anymore. I just keep it on my shelf as like an accessory. Should I break this out more? Maybe just put a whole bunch of stickers on it. It makes me look like I'm I am an astronaut or something. When I first got my Honda CB350, it was super retro, so I thought I needed some sort of retro helmet. This is a Bell Custom 500. It sucks for fit and definitely doesn't protect anything because it's not a full face. Speaking of full face and retro, let me take this thing off and dive into a modern retro full face helmet. Picked it up. Modern full face helmet with a retro styling. This is the Chewy Glamster. So let's unbox this thing. Got my computer up to cheat a little bit on specs. It's been a year since they started advertising it or so. And once I saw it, I was pretty stoked. I'm sure by now you've seen uh, the AGV X3000, the one I wear in countless amount of photos and rides, uh, and the acclaimed, the critically acclaimed, Bell Bullet. The Bell Bullet is like the staple right now for vintage retro helmets. It's hard to beat. It's flying off the shelves. I know there's any color you can dream of and every graphic you can dream of that exists for the Bell Bullet. But this is to compete with that market segment. Chewy finally released a helmet. I'm stoked about it. I wanted that quality that Chewy brings and I think this is gonna do it. You can see I got the Glamster here. Glamster, I got it in matte black and I got it in medium. Now I checked the circumference of my head. I put all my specs up actually on my website just in case everybody asks. I always get asked how tall I am, what my waist size is. I figured why not, just put it out there. My head circumference is about 57 and a half centimeters. I'm right in between the medium specs of the Shoei. Notice, before using your helmet, be sure to carefully read the instruction booklet and all the warning notices. Save the booklet and packaging for future reference. Nah. Protected. Boom. I said we wouldn't read it, but let's open the booklet. 
All right, what is this? What is this? Hmm. Ooh, sticky sticks. These are going on the laptop. Might as well do it now, right? I don't know which one to go with, the black or the silver. The silver's gonna be like really odd on my Space Gray MacBook. Huh. How to properly use your helmet. Done. How many instructions do you need to put on a helmet? Warning, pin locks, silicon oil. Forgot to mention, I pulled this out earlier. This is the pin lock that comes with it. There it is. oozing with style. Now, I wanted to get this, this is super cool. Now, I wanted to get this with the dark tent. Like all of my other helmets, I get that dark smoke or smoke tent. Actually, due to COVID, all the factories are shut down. I'm gonna have to wait for like a month plus to get that dark tent. Let's dive into this thing a little bit. This is super cool. First off, let's talk the name. Glamorous, hipster. I don't know what they were going for. Anyway. Despite the name, like everybody else gives it hell. Let's dive into just some first impressions after unboxing this thing. First off, let's talk price. 360 pounds or 435 US dollars. So that's kind of in line or a little bit steeper than the Bell Bullet or the AGV X3000 that I did a review on earlier. So it's in the market. I got this in the matte black. Pretty clean, matte black. My biggest worry with this thing is fingerprint magnet. I'm pretty greasy and I'm assuming most motorcycle guys either gonna be sweaty or greasy from the bike. So that could be something to consider. Give me a few weeks, I'll put a review together and actually report back to you guys on this uh, you know, finger magnetism. Uh, if I just made that up. Another thing I liked about the matte black is it blacked out the shoey. One of the issues that I didn't like about the AGV X3000 was you can't remove the branding or it doesn't come in like black on black, so it's not, you know, sleek. This takes care of that with putting a light branded shoey logo on the top rim. You see the lock mechanism for the visor. Pretty smart. It's just a screwdriver and what looks like to be a Phillips, so you could use whatever's handy or whatever multi-tool you got in your bag. I need to take this visor protector off. Come on, baby. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, come on, come on. I think I was supposed to start from the other direction. There's a sticker. <sighs> Clean. No rock chips, no bugs. Soon though, padding looks to be pretty top notch. It is foam and fabric. You got leather on the outside, all around the bottom, but the full inside, I don't know if you can see that, is actually fabric. I did used to own the RF 12,000 by Shuey, and this looks actually very similar from what I recall. Correct me if I'm wrong. No fabric where the chin is. Safety poles for the red as well as stickers right here. You do have grating inside of the ventilation there. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Might be hell to wash bugs out of that. How to open the visor. Pulls forward a little bit and lift up. One side, one hand, uh, visor, up, down situation. Feels really solid. Woo! Like the sound of that. The pivot joint. Feels very sturdy. Probably about six stops. Yeah, it feels very, very solid. And in terms of comparing it to the Bell Bullet, this is far more sturdy. 
Around the face brim, you have the rubber sealing that actually makes contact with the visor. So that's gonna be your weatherproofing. Uh, and any rain will be stopped by that, as well as wind. Got a little shoey on the bottom there. Attention to details. So far, not much fingerprints. And I showered a while ago, so I should be pretty greasy. In terms of ventilation, you got two areas. You have the chin, which has this grating here. I don't know if I'm a fan of that yet, just it may be really tough after you get bugs or gravel or dirt in there to clean out. And you got the forehead ventilation as well. Satisfying. I think that does it for the unboxing. I need to put this thing on, go for a ride. It's too beautiful not to be outside right now. What are you doing watching this video? Go ride, but be on the lookout for a review of this guy. I'm anxious to see how it stacks up against the AGV X3000 and the Bell Bullet. Like, comment, and subscribe. Didn't think I was gonna be a giveaway type of guy, but uh, my misfortune is your fortune. So if you are medium and akin gloves, you better be subscribing so you can not miss out. Tell me what retro helmet you guys have. Do you think this one will live up to the AGV X3000? Which was the winner between the Bell Bullet and the AGV X3000. What do you guys think? First impressions. I saw the gray one out there. It was hard to pass up on the gray because it's pretty slick. This matte black was calling my name. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Tell me what helmet I should maybe review next or maybe try to get my hands on next. I did pay for this thing. So I'm not picking up every freaking helmet out there. Tell me the one that I should spend my hard earned money on. Like I said, I was waiting for this thing for about a year to be released. Finally got my hands on it. Anxious to see how it actually performs while riding. I'm anticipating the wind noise is super good. Protection's obviously good. Anxious to see how the visor stacks up and the ventilation stacks up. Until that review comes or my next video comes, stay safe, stay sane, keep riding. And watch out for those crazy grandmas that'll just pull out in front of you with their Buick. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Oh, you're still here. Quick dialogue. <clears throat> this guy actually isn't even available in the United States. That's a problem. And the problem is, it's not DOT certified. Now I know what you're thinking. Hmm, it's ECE certified and not DOT certified? DOT certification is like a lower standard. Now you got like Snell, ECE, DOT, just from my basic, not looking up anything kind of knowledge. Uh, why not just get it DOT certified? Not sure why. Anyway, this may be tough to get your hands on if you live in the United States, and it really doesn't count as a helmet if you're in the United States and your state requires you to wear a helmet. I know it's gonna protect me, so I'm not, I don't think we're being stupid in actually wearing this thing, even though it's not DOT certified. It's, it's definitely rated higher than this helmet that I'm wearing right now. I know plenty of you guys live worldwide, so if you are able to go to a store and actually pick this up, props to you, go do that, go try it on. But if you're in the United States like me, this may be tough to come by. I wanted to quickly touch base on the ratings and certifications because many of you guys would go to Shoei, North American outlet, type in Glamster, see nothing like I did. And that's because it's not DOT certified. It sounds like they have no plans to bring it to the United States and get DOT certification. Bark at them, hashtag Glamster to the United States. I did want to make note on that because in terms of safety, you should be following DOT certification in your state and local city laws. So that is something that you should have on your helmet, which is a DOT certification. Long-winded, this thing's not DOT certified, so it's technically not allowed on the United States roads. Peace for the second time.